This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by Mattress Firm. Mattress buying made easy with lowest prices and comfort guarantee. Save 10% off with code MMANUTS10. Liquid Web, our premier hosting provider. Save 55% off hosting for three months with code FIGHT55. Limited time offer. Green Chef, choose from a wide variety of deliciously clean meals delivered to your door. Get $80 off the first four weeks with code GW80GC. Magic Spoon, healthy cereal that tastes too good to be true. Get free shipping with code YWHMAGIC. Defense Soap, the world's best soap for wrestlers, jiu-jitsu, and MMA athletes. Use code MMANUTS for 15% off. Hey fans, Emery Notes, episode 486. 486! My name is Ingo Weigel. Back here with Emery Show. Hey fans, for my fans, walk line between serious and ridiculous. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like the delayed reaction there. I figured I'd go slow this time. It reminded me of, uh, what the hell was that show? It was, uh, Jesus Christ, it's been a long time ago. I don't know if it was Second City, little John Candy. He used to do some stuff like. <laughs> oh. Exactly. That sounds right. Something like that. Something like that. So those beer guys, eh? Those... Hey, what's happening? Hey. Hey. So, yeah, we we're uh, talking about storms, right? We had some storm action happening. So yes. Like, uh, save this story for said show. So massive storms came rolling through our area yesterday, knocking out power for hundreds of thousands of people. I know a couple people tonight we're recording on Tuesday and a couple people comment have told them of our friends that they're not getting power back till Saturday. It's what? fucking Tuesday and they've already been out without power for a day. <laughs> How is it possible that you can't get um, power within like 24 hours? Because there's so many people without it. That's how bad it was. If you, I mean, if you looked at that map, it was just this line of red just rolling from one side to yeah. the other. Like, holy fuck. On our winds. Yeah. So I'm at Jewel getting water, like filling up my five-gallon jugs. I just get them in my truck. I start the truck up. My phone starts going, ee. Like, what the fuck is this? Oh, tornado warning. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, I should probably get home. I got an eight minute drive. Like, no big deal. Passing by the high school, eat, eat, sirens. And then my wife's calling me. She's like, oh, i the fucking tornado. I'm like, all right, dude. Let's get everyone in the basement. It'll be all right. But then I can't believe when I'm driving, everybody's doing the fucking speed limit. Why are we doing the speed limit? I want to go 50, 60 miles an hour right now down a 20, 25, 30 mile an hour road and no one is speeding. No, everyone's just fucking casually taking their time like it's a normal day. Why? Why? Because they're not scared? Well, they're stupid because I've had a fucking tornado <laughs> run through my backyard, yes. take a tree out, destroy my neighbor's garage for him and take mm -hmm. all my trees down. So it's like no joke back here. So then I get home and I get, I, you know, go into the basement. Is everyone locked down? The dog's in. Okay, everyone's cool. Fine. I'm like, oh, I got to go outside because I have all these patio umbrellas. I got a badminton net set up. So I run out there, get everything squared away, and then start to go back in. So within three minutes, shit went from zero to 100. Yeah. So, like, I have a ring video of me running back in. I'm like, ah, what the fuck? It was crazy. And then you hear like hail and all sorts of shit. And luckily, this was the first time where we didn't have anything get destroyed. Yeah. Uh, normally, we have shit destroyed. Power goes out. Usually, if the wind's a little bit high, it fucking power goes out. But holy fuck, man. It was pretty scary. There was some hail. And uh, when I was driving home, there was a lot of debris everywhere. Like chunks of trees, like entire huge like sections of branches with bushes and every all yeah. kinds of look like a whole tree fell, but I don't know. Seems like we get one of these storms every year. Yeah. And it was weird because the temperature dropped thirty degrees in about five minutes too. Yep. It was ninety five and then the next thing you know it's sixty five. And then back up to seventy five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say fuck well. you. So yeah, that was fucking bananas, but I'm just happy this time we didn't get the fucking bad shit yeah because i gotta move cars too because the one car i said at the end of the driveway 
sits under a tree with like semi shaky branches. Okay. Uh, let's just move this. Too scary. Yeah. Yeah. So we had that going on. <sighs> what else? We oh, let's talk about some UFC this weekend, right? Yeah. So we had fucking Joe Martinez on the call. He's my favorite announcer, Ingo. Yes, you like him. Yeah, you know why? Because he's natural and he's not out there trying to blow out his ACL on the call and not oh. make it about himself. <laughs> like, why Why is Bruce Buffer all about himself when he does the announcing? I don't know. It's a great question. I think he's just very, uh, judging by his book and his podcast, which I don't know if I still think, he's very into himself. <laughs> yeah, and trying to get pussy. Right? That's Always. the thing. And why does ESPN need to mute the broadcast everyone every time someone swears? FCC. Like are, well, are we not adults? Are they not on are we not on ESPN plus? I mean, I don't know if that one ran on TV because I watched it on ESPN Plus, but what the fuck, man? I heard a couple of shits get through, but then it's oh blank everything out for three seconds and I can't hear jack shit. Yeah. God damn it. I thought we were adults, but I guess well, not. We are not adults, Matt. No, we're children. I'm a, the biggest I'm, child. I'm a giant child, yes. I agree. Do so you want to talk about the main event? We'll start there. Derek Lewis versus Alexi Olenek. And it's crazy to think Derek Lewis is ranked number four in the heavyweight division. I don't know. It just doesn't seem skilled enough to be number four. But anyway. Yeah. And uh, 265 pounds versus 227. Yeah, Olenek looked uh, kind of small. <laughs> He's a little bit. He's, and, and but, uh, quite the heavy record on him. He's 59, 13, and 1 going into this fight. Oh, shit. I didn't like, know that. I didn't Christ, see that the fucking 70-plus fights. Is that for real? Is that joke? Yeah, or? that – well, uh, who knows? That's what the UFC graphic put up, and – I ran with that. Like, Jesus, <laughs> okay. fuck. The boa, boa constrictor. Yeah. So, so what did you see? What did you like? Well, I thought the first round, um, you know, he had Lewis in trouble a couple of times, especially with that, like, uh, what do you call that? Like a scarf hold. Scarf hold or something. Yeah. And Lewis looked like he was almost ready to tap, but maybe they – I think in the post-fight interview, he said he had trained for that uh, potential to happen, so he was ready for it. But – um. You know, the second round, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's only they ran out of gas because of – Yeah, you look like he fucking so gassed himself out trying to do that squeeze because there was a good – looked like a minute 30 squeeze at least that he was putting in on him. Yeah, he just couldn't get it. And then Lewis comes out, you know, with almost like a flying knee to the to the chest, right? Yeah. That right, which is oh, – fucking, fucking brutal and so nice to be able to actually hear that and not the crowd noise. and yeah. How about that ground and pound afterwards? Fucking you hear that like, slapping thing like a toast, like a yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even just m- m- muscle like I don't know bone on meat. Just <laughs> it's like a fucking ribeye, bone in steak. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know, Lewis. I don't know what to do with this guy because I don't feel like he's like you said. He's very one dimensional. Cardio is questionable. He's just technique kind of off like, the ground is usually strength to power out of submissions yes. or just weathers the storm just enough. And then, you know, I think they said he's got the most KOs in heavyweight UFC history now. Like, that's just bananas. Because yeah. he, he said he wants to get down to about 250 for his next fight. So he's looking at December. But again, I, yeah, I don't know what you do with him. It's not going to happen. He's been talking about losing weight for how long? Yeah, and he's had back problems. And when he starts his interview, he didn't know he's on camera. So he says, I got to go take a shit. He always has to take a shit after his fights. (laughs) I know. What the hell is that about? I think it's the the adrenaline dump after it's done. It's like, oh, I got to let it all out now. (laughs) But he's not even fighting in front of people. Maybe it's just the the thrill of the fight, you know? You get that huge shot of adrenaline. Yeah, maybe he should just shit the cage, man. People have done that, of course. Joe Romero. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I don't know what to do. And then you had uh, the co-main event was Chris Weidman versus Amari Akhmadov at one eighty-five. Yeah, I did not see that, but judging from the commentary about that fight online, it looked like Weidman didn't look very good. I was gonna, I disagree because I'd say Weidman got the unanimous decision. 
Yeah, you heard me. Unanimous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he likes to gaze. Uh, he, I thought he looked the best he's looked in a long time. You know, moving back to 185, and at least in the first round, you could see the influence of training with Wonder Boy. He was very elusive in his defense, and the way he was striking was Wonder Boy-esque in his approach. Okay. Unfortunately, he got kind of tired come second round. So round one goes to Weidman, and he was going like a heavy wrestling approach in the first round. And he just kind of faded in the second round. And then the third round was all Weidman, where he was a fresher fighter, got a takedown, did work from the top position. So, And then he almost submitted him with what looked like a modified banana splits. I don't know what the fuck he had him in. <laughs> But he had the one okay. leg locked up and the other leg he's torquing, so the guy's fucking Ouch. groin is getting torqued. Too bad you can't elbow him while right that's nuts. going down. Yeah, just on. <laughs> yeah. But <clears throat> I know Luke Rockhold was talking about he was ready to fight again. And I think Weidman is open to that. So can we make that matchup again? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all for it. Versus... Let's do it. Yeah, I don't know who wins this time around. I mean, Rockhold is rusty, but Rockhold's got you, – you still have the great training partners, right? Velasquez and DC, and we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think you should stick to acting and modeling or whatever he's well, doing. Well, it depends. He should probably take guys down. His top game is suffocating, but fuck, man. Yeah, he's running into a bad stretch. <clears throat> I want to talk about Bellator a little bit. Okay. I'm going to share this picture. This just looks awkward, right? This this post fight fucking shit. Like I have to be eight million miles away to do a fucking interview. And there's a guy with a stick. <laughs> I need to be ten feet away from you and hold the mic. Big John's got his own mic. Isn't everybody fucking tested? I don't know what's going on. Maybe they have to do that for some kind of weird safety regulation. But I thought they're fighting on Indian burial grounds or something. Or casinos. I don't know what Bellator does. I mean, I I think, uh, well, do you want to talk about the Chandler and Benson Henderson fight? Is that why you brought this up? Yeah. Because Michael Chandler looks like he needs to be fighting in the UFC after after that performance. Well, I'll tell you what, he won't be very successful without all the go-go juice, allegedly. (laughs) Because I think that might be part of Benson Henderson's problem. Because now, now... I don't know if Benson will play the steroid game or not, but yeah. if you're in Bellator and you're not on steroids, I think you're a fool. Because Benson is what? He's five and four since he went to Bellator. And that's crazy to think that he's had nine fights in Bellator, right? That happened quick. <laughs> right. I can remember him just the other day being the fucking 155 champion. Was man. that three years ago that he went over? It, at least, yeah. Benson Henderson here. Let's see. It's uh, it's so crazy. It was because I forget who. I think Czech Congo was the first guy to make the jump. 2016. Oh, it was man, that seems like forever ago. I know. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, five and four. It's not Being good. Roger Huerta. Yeah. Weird. And then Matt Mitrion took a loss to Timothy Johnson, TKO in the first round. And then the, the awesome one I wish we could play was Valerie Laredo. She fucking landed this huge overhand right, and it was, again, it's that thunderous shot where it almost sounds like Rocky hitting the side of beef. It just, mm-hmm. boom, drops the chick she's fighting, and then ground and pound, and then says something like i'm a bad bitch i'm on fucking tiktok or instagram come fuck with me or something and then does some crazy provocative dance like okay cool i'm I'm down with whatever she's selling so with the sickness sometimes i try not to Hmm. and you want to move to ufc 282 sure Let's just start DC versus Stipe 3. And I want to start with reason number 17 of why I don't like Stipe Miocic. Oh, boy. Here it goes. I I can't believe this fucking guy. So here's his Twitter handle, right? Uh, Stipe Miocic, greatest heavyweight of all time. Really? So I – 
I looked at who do you think would be the most vain heavyweight in the UFC of all time? Uh, Tim Sylvia or – Yeah, damn right. You got or, it. Or so, uh, Brandon Vera. <laughs> good. I, I agree with both, but I, I looked at Tim Sylvia. So what does he say? He's the official Twitter profile of Tim the Maniac Sylvia. He's just five-time UFC champ. He doesn't crown himself the greatest heavyweight of all time. So uh, fucking Miocic can fuck off. You can't claim yourself the greatest heavyweight of all time because anyone that says that is not. You're just not. You don't see a GSP saying that. You don't see a uh, I don't know who else you want to put in that fucking Anderson Silva saying that. You don't. Eh, John Jones might, but he can. Yeah, that one I'll allow. But fuck off, Miocic. I'm sorry. So what do you think about this? The third time around. Did you see any of the uh, embeddeds as I asked no, that? I have not. They just I'm, came out like today, but uh, Miocic looks like he's sick. That's how lean he is. He looks like he's 225. Why do you think he's leaning up so much? Probably because he wants to go to distance. Cardio? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think Cormier is going to take him down and wrestle fuck him this fight. I, I, I think that that makes the most sense. Um, I think he'll wear him down in the first couple of rounds, and I'm predicting a KO, like third round by Cormier. I think Cormier is trying to go out with a win, and I think he's going to go back to his roots of the wrestling and yeah. then finish him up when he's tired, you know? So, Yeah, and DC was even talking about that. He said he was going to use his wrestling more this time. And if you look at the other fights, I think they fought a total of six rounds, Miocic won one of those fights, and he still is arguing, oh, I'm the better fighter, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you're not the fucking better fighter. You got lucky because in the fourth round of the second fight, you decided, I'm going to switch it up and go to the body. And yeah. that happened to work, and it wasn't something that coaches told him to do. Coaches yeah. were just like, wow, he's got a, a huge fight IQ. He figured that one out on his own. Like, really? What the fuck is he paying you for then? You're not doing your job. <laughs> Fucking dummies. No one thought of that, yeah. yeah. Ugh. So, no, I agree. I think it's uh, all DC in this one. And I want to see those huge slams like we saw on goddamn everyone. He did it to DC, or he did it to Stipe in, I don't know if it was the first fight. One of the fights he did. Josh Barnett, out. too, yeah. right? Barnett, uh, Henderson. Dan Henderson was the go worst. Go down the was list. Like head getting thrown around. That yeah. was really crazy. It was offensive. It was <laughs> offensive. You can't do that to one of the elders in MMA. God damn uh, it. That's Dan yeah. motherfucking Henderson. Yes. So, yeah, I agree. I, I want to see like a third round. I would like to see a slam knockout. I don't believe we've okay. seen one of those in a while, but third round. And then – the UFC is promoting this as DC's last fight. Do you believe that? Hard to say. Uh, I mean, if the money's right, but I, I think he's been – yeah, I, I think it might be. Because I, I think if he wins, there's no reason to come back because he's going to be bumping up against John Jones again. And there, I don't think he wants any yeah. part of that. There's, there's just no – yeah, and his coaches are, I think, trying to push him into that John Jones fight. Like, if he wins and the yeah. money's right – they're trying to push him into the third John Jones fight. And yeah, you guys have an ulterior motive. You just want money. <laughs> to right. Let the guy go out on top. I don't think he beats Sean at light heavyweight. And I don't think he beats Sean at, at heavyweight. Even, you know, he's how old is he now? He's got to be fucking pushing 40. 38, I think. Yeah. yeah. 39. Late 30s. It, it's just, it's too much risk. Go out on top as a champion. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the best way to go out. So I agree. But this card looks pretty solid because then you have the co-main event, which is kind of crazy, is Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Vera. And O'Malley, you talk about dynamic, lengthy, and lots of power. And Vera is scrappy as fuck. So this is a tough fight. And then I, I got to go with O'Malley. But this is like the first guy that has, I think, a winning record that O'Malley's fought, <laughs> at least oh, since man. he's been in the UFC. So it's a... It's an interesting and tough fight, but I think power and length can fuck up a lot of people. Yes. Girth. Yeah, this was <laughs> about girth. Girth. The bigger the girth, something, the something. They said O'Malley is starting his own apparel line, I guess. He sold 
they say he sold twenty thousand dollars worth of his own apparel in jerseys in thirty nine seconds. Wow! So now he said, "Well," oh. and and whatever he made from that, because whoever reported the story reported it wrong, said he made twenty thousand in profit. I'm like, no, he didn't. He had twenty thousand in sales. There was cost, bitches. Yeah, you gotta buy the shirts. You gotta put your shit on them. All that jazz, but. Anyway, so that's the co-main. Uh, Junior Dos Santos versus – what is it, though? Versus Junior, Junior Dos Santos? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Rosenstruck. He will fight himself. <laughs> yeah, he got damn right he will with his rape stash. <laughs> one with the rape Trump, stash. He fights himself. Yeah. That's fine. He's so happy, right? And when Cain Velasquez beat the fucking – beat him happy, I think. So <clears> oh, <throat> that's a tough fight. <sighs> Dos Santos, two fight losing streak, the Blaze and Gano and Rosenstruck coming off of this loss to Gano. Uh, fucking crapshoot, man. Heavyweight's a 50 50 at times, and I'm yep. probably leaning towards Rosenstruck just because he's fresher. And then you look at the card Jim Miller fighting again, Felice Herrig on the card. Jim Miller. There might have been one other notable name on the card, but it's a, it looks like a solid card overall. It does. I agree. I think Dodson's on there, but he's fighting a fucking weight class. I could give two shits about. Yeah, it's gonna. It looks like it's a it's a pay per view purchase worth uh, making, yeah. right? To watch on a Sunday morning. Sunday morning. I mean, I'm fucking we're, staying up to goddamn one o'clock again, you fucking cocksuckers. Yes. With their five hour pay per view and two hours worth of ads that you shove down your throat hole. Mm -hmm. Hey, speaking of no one's looking, what else you got going on? Um, okay, well, I have a story for you. Did you hear that UFC, the UFC struck a deal with George St. Pierre to be mm. the official um, uh, play by play uh, commentator from Cage Side? For the French commentary team. For the so will he be speaking in the French? I assume he's speaking French then? Yeah, so he'll be fr speaking French and um, I believe his first language, right? Dana White quoting saying, we just hired GSP. He's the French commentator for us now. That's more what I'd like to see GSP doing. <laughs> I, <laughs> Being my bitch, right? I, Is that what he's trying to say? Fighting. Yeah. Well, I think this seems a little bit like a, uh, a Chuck Liddell type of a setup. Like, here's a cushy job for you, you know, mm. see how you do. Well, I thought they didn't like him because ever since that semi, like, walk away, weird retirement, like, I take time away from the sport and not tell anybody, I kind of caught Dana White off guard. There was always that bad blood. And then they kind of let him come back, win the title, walk away again. And then I thought there was a rumor that if, say, Habib gets past Gaethje, Habib might want to fight GSP, and they're saying, well, now this may be easier if he's commentating because he's back in the good graces of the UFC. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't want to see him fight again. I think I'm, I'm good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, I think he's at tarnished legacy point, right? Mm -hmm. He went out on top. Dual division champion. Be like Barry Sanders and just stay retired. You know? Never lost his title, walked away from both of them. Yep. So – why come back? And especially against Habib, it's not going to be an exciting fight. <laughs> yeah. Boring versus uh, maybe boring. Hard to say. Did you see? I'm just going to read the, the headline to this one story. Kevin Lee tears other ACL while recovering from ACL surgery. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't even, I didn't read all the details, but how is it even fucking possible? What kind of physical therapist is going to have you pushing hard enough to fucking destroy your other knee in the process? I don't, I don't get it. Oh, my God. Is he is at he... a top team? Or what was that? No. Uh, where's the one where no. is, uh, freaking – where Kane trains? Man, my brain's not working. Oh, no. Just that, that fucking weirdo guy that was yeah. having him max power, max effort, max strength – the leg yeah. extensions and I showed my brother who used to do like personal training for professional athletes. He's going, Oh my fucking God. Are you kidding me right now? How yeah. does that guy have any knees left? Hence why he's out of the sport. It's bad. 
And then we have a, a new fight announcement. It said Neil Magny was supposed to fight Jeff Neal on August 29th, but Jeff Neal is out and apparently almost died. So now Robbie Lawler is stepping in the fight, Neil Magny. Uh, and weird, I looked at his stats. Three fight losing streak for Robbie Lawler. He just lost to Dos Anjos, Askren, and Colby Covington, and he's lost four of his last five. Okay. That's kind of weird. I didn't. I don't remember all that. I remember the Askren <laughs> loss, and then I can think, yeah, I remember the Covington loss because he, he was always just waiting to land the big shot, but Covington was just peppering him the entire fight. Yeah. I, fuck, I don't know if the – that may go back to the Roy McDonald fight or fights, right, where they just took years off of each other. Yeah. You know, beat, has fared well since then. No, I, I think that's – you might be too tough for your own good sometimes, and then yeah. it like fucks the rest of your career up, right? Yep, I agree. Fuck, but I don't. I don't know what's going to happen on that. It's tough to say on a short notice fight, right? He hasn't fought since I think August of last year. He might do all right. He's always dangerous. So it's true. I, I although I think Magny might just take him down. So I, I don't know. Do you got any other um, canoes? Got one, one last thing. Did Go you ahead. see this? Uh, Mike Tyson. Versus Roy Jones Jr., um, um, I guess, what do you call this? Yeah, the pay-per-view. Marketing picture. What do you well, think? It got, it got pushed. It too. did. This, this date's wrong, but the, the picture stays the same. Um, I, I like it. Now September 20-something? or no, no smiles. Don't fucking smile. But I feel like they need to be showing the physiques because, and the ages. Because, God damn it. Uh, I think both of them are in ph- fucking phenomenal shape. Right? I agree. Both I, completely not on the sauce. Not at all. And I think they were using Mike Tyson to promote Shark Week on whatever, probably Discovery Channel. And he's all gacked out of his mind, fighting sharks. He's getting yeah. in the water with the fucking chain mail on. Fuck that. That's a whole lot of fuck that. I agree. Did you see the EA UFC has their uh, fourth rendition coming out, and they have fighter rankings? I just want to show the top ten here. Okay, so pull this up, and you can give me your feedback on said top ten. Whoa, Amanda Nunes, John <sighs> Jones. She's number one. She looks all gacked up over there, man. Let's see it's John Jones, Habib, Valentina, Henry, Henry Cejudo at number five. Wow. Okay. I don't know. There's missed some people missing here. And it's surprising GSP is still in the game. <laughs> it's weird. Got to make money off of them. But in perpetuity. But why do we have to be so PC that we have to have the women with the men? And then just ESPN always likes to be controversial. So let's put a woman on top. I'm like, obviously, John Jones is the best. So he should be number one. You got, you got to pull the women out and put them in their own fucking category. Because if you look at it from that standpoint, I could see, yes, you could put Nunes first, Shevchenko, Zhang. That makes sense. And then am I going to put Norma Gomedov second? Probably not. Cejudo's off the fucking – Cejudo's fucking retired. He yep. shouldn't even be in the game. Plus, it's a stupid weight class. And Miocic, where the fuck is Cormier? You're going to say Miocic is better than Cormier? Yeah, it makes no sense. It's fucking retarded. Yeah, I hear you. So, I'm with you on that. The game comes out in, what, in a couple of weeks, doesn't it? I don't – it might already be out. A lot of people are playing it, and I don't know if it's beta or not right now. I hear a lot of um, talk and people talking about, well, the pay seems about online. I'm fighting for the title, and I'm getting 270 to show and 270 to win and on a five-fight deal. Was it UFC 5? Four? Four. It uh, doesn't look like it's out yet. Oh, maybe it's just beta still then, which is weird. It's beta fuckers. <clears throat> Yeah, I heard the new Xbox, I want to say, was November coming out. Yeah. And I thought they said the new 
Halo is not going to be released at launch time for the, the fucking system. Isn't that weird? Really? Or, yeah. Okay. Don't they normally do that? Wasn't it always like paired? Like, here's the new yeah. fucking Halo, which looks and, awesome, by the way, from the reviews I've seen, from the videos I've yeah. seen. I'm hoping so. I haven't played a good Halo since shit. When's the last time? Like, I think it was whenever we played. Was it? Yeah, that was fun. When we those are some hard missions. Remember? Yeah, but that that was like a good fucking game, and hopefully it'll be like a. What if we could do like three player? Like we get Brian, like me, you, and Brian on like fucking crazy Halo shit. He he'll probably be jumping off like dad. <laughs> like what, Brian, what are you doing? I'm fucking passed out. <laughs> that was like the uh, one time that happened to me. The guy I was playing with the I forgot what it was was fucking sleeping. I think it was that uh, game we were playing last spring, whatever that was, the New York game. Or oh, uh, the division. Yeah, there was a guy <laughs> playing with in the party, and he was snoring. Passed out. How do it? <laughs> well, it's the gaze, goddamn it. <laughs> yeah. And then what well, would that be like? The what was the other game we were playing? Borderlands. When yes. Just, I don't know if it was you or me. We're just fucking looking at the sky or something. <laughs> like, what are you doing? It was me. That was you. Me. Like, what are you doing? I I'm can't play those shooters shit. anymore, Matt. I don't know if I'm too old now. Like, I watched my son play like Call of, Call of Duty. Uh, Warzone or whatever. I'm like, holy mm-hmm. fuck, this is way too fast paced. Like, I can't. There's oh, Warzone's much, fast paced. Like, there's too much going on on the screen. So, um, I really haven't played video games in months. Like, hmm. I don't know. It's weird. I'm just kind of been reading a lot. Watching you losing it. your your edge or? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I like I'm... that fast action. I need some of that. Do you? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I want more, like, smaller map with a lot of fucking action. Not, I don't like the big map and trying to find, where is my guy to kill? Where, let me run around. Like, I want yeah. more condensed. Let's see I got what nothing else, else going on. Good. I know we had talked about this one. I'm going to share in a second. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Baseball. This guy was in the stands. One of the baseball games. Fucking. Oh, <laughs> we yeah. got a birdies. Bernie. He's making yeah, a comeback. Uh-huh. That's cool. I, I hope they can, you put more weird people in the stands. At least hockey just said, fuck that shit. There's something to be said about clean. Like the UFC clean and hockey clean. Baseball is dirty because I saw some of the stadiums almost look like they were filled with fans, like the fake cardboard printouts. Like, okay. wow. I mean, I get it. If you can charge the money, you probably should. And I, I can't fault them for that. But I feel like there should be some interaction. Like, they should move around. They should be able to fight and throw beer, heckle. Let's do a little tweet of the week. Let's see what's going on. Okay. I don't even know what I put. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's always shocking. Every time I pull shit up, it's, it's going to be Barstool Sports. Apparently. John McAfee arrested for wearing a thong mask at the airport. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I guess you can't do that. <laughs> That's actually a thong. Yeah. Huh. I never thought about that. Because I, I like the breathe, but that's is, is it the lace? Is that what's causing? The I don't problem? know how you can get arrested for that. That seems weird. Well, he's probably in another country that's strict or something. That would be my guess. Or it's just because it's who he is. And I thought he's done some not so great shit when he's in other countries. Oh, very sketchy person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think the drugs are kind of. I think he's on meth. I allegedly. I don't know. Right along. Let's do some astronauts. Sobrowski asks, why is it that people still defend Dana White's douchebaggery, corruption, and general assholery? Assholery. <laughs> assholery. That's yeah. a- sure. Feels uh, like, yeah, go ahead. Because we love him. We love him for it. I, that's, I liked it back in the day when he was way more vocal. I don't know. I feel like he needs to get back to that. Fuck you and fuck you and because you're a bitch. No, he's still like that. Yeah. I agree. It's like I kind of shift on him. Like sometimes I love him, sometimes I hate him. I guess it just depends on the talk, the topic. I love him for doing the fucking Fight Island and being the first 
real man out of all the fucking sports leagues just say, fuck you, I'm going to run an event and you can suck my dick. And since I can't do it in the United States, I'll find a fucking island and make it happen. And he did it and he did it safe and everyone else can suck a dick. So from that aspect, I respect him. From mm-hmm. fighter pay, I don't. But that's its own thing and it always will be. But, yeah, you know. I mean, some people got fucked recently with that one card where some guys showed up, <clears throat> did nothing wrong, made weight, but whoever they were fighting either <clears throat> got sick, missed weight, or had COVID, and he didn't even give them their show money. He just offered some of these guys like 10 grand. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's where I have a problem, but at least for getting the sport up and running and making everyone else chase him. It only helps the UFC and helps MMA. So I agree. Is there any fighter from 10 years ago while in their prime that would hold a belt today in MMA? Uh, while in their prime would hold a belt today. That's a great question. I want to say BJ Penn, but I think that's not good. That would have been my question. He would have been BJ Penn? <laughs> I mean, I want to say that, but I don't think that he, even in his prime, was – I think the BJ Penn that fought Kenny – Kenny Florent? No, no, Diego Sanchez. The BJ Penn that bought, fought Diego Sanchez could beat, just, could beat anybody. Like, could. I'm not saying he would, but I'm saying he could. That was probably the best shape he's ever been in his whole yeah. life. And uh, – it was Diego Sanchez, wasn't it? I think it was. Where he split his fucking head wide open and all that. Yeah. yeah. I think he threw a head kick where he not, doesn't normally throw him. No, and I think he was working with the Marinoviches at the time, and he was just like in phenomenal shape. He might so, have been on a little, ha ha, a little something, yeah, something. Well, you know. Because you look back at some of those, I'm like, God damn, BJ was thick. Like, what they showed, I think I just saw a video of him when he submitted Matt Hughes. I think that was the fight where we were at. Yes. Uh, he looked, and then he ran out of the fucking octagon knocked, like he, a goddamn he said, him or man. knock him out. I thought he knocked him out. K- TKO. Am I remembering that wrong? I don't know. He choked him unconscious in the video I saw. Okay. I can't. T- that was that was that was the first fight. Okay. First. Yeah, I think that was the first. Where? Yeah, that was a good one. I don't know. Uh, I was okay. gonna say maybe Brock Lesnar. I don't remember. Because heavyweight, fucking anything can happen. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as he's not the Verk, the Verk, you know what I'm saying. Thank you. <laughs> Someone's trying to divert, divert his, tic- his testicular cancers, and it's bad. I think it'd be all right. Just don't kick him in the midsection over him. God damn you, you son of a bitch. Uh, I could potentially argue maybe a Rich Franklin because he was Johnny Five Rounder as long as he's not fighting a Southpaw. No Southpaws. Okay. Uh, If you two were not in your current professions, what would you be doing for work? Uh, Well, I just switched careers from, although I'm still doing sales. Uh, I moved into psychology therapy. I feel, I feel like that's a calling for me. If it wasn't for that, I'd love to be a musician. If that somehow how it could happen, I would be all in. Doing lots of drugs. No, man. Songs. Not drugs. <laughs> Just write, writing songs and playing music for people. I'd, I'd love that. This guy's over here fucking tying something up. <sighs> yeah, not, not that kind of music. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. You don't want a heroin. But I like this, man. I think, I think, I think we're, I don't know, it's pretty cool that we get to do this. Yeah, making shit happen on a weekly basis. Right. That's what it's all about. I would like to be in the gangbang cleanup crew. You just want to, like, the scrub? big ass mop. Okay. Swabbing the decks. Just the decks, Ingo. Don't get your hopes up. Like, what? I ring those mops out. I have no idea what you're saying. It's probably okay. best. <laughs> <laughs> we'll right along. Rodrigo Machado will close it out. It's time. Pound sign, nuts rule. Pound sign, Matt Rabe train. Pound sign, Ingo Sugar Daddy. He's scaring me. Uh, uh, will artificial. Oh, sorry. Let me step back. Oops. Fast forward. 
once again, I want to ask you guys some existential and philosophical questions. I like very long, awkward po uh, pauses. Uh, will artificial intelligence help increase human lifespan in the future? I think it will. And it will also kill us all. So, you know. It's, it's a little <laughs> both. It depends. If Elon yeah. Musk has his way, it'll keep that shit in line. Hopefully, yes. that guy has a bigger say. But in stuff. I will say this. Although but, I think he's pretty intelligent, I have a hard time trusting a man who marries the same woman twice. Did he do that? Yes, he did. <laughs> Why? Is he trying to get his money back? Uh, no. <laughs> do you get no. your money back? Like if you've lost half and then you get remarried, you get all your money back? You do not. <laughs> she, she I mean, maybe uh, technically you do because I guess you marry, marry back into your own money. And then make her sign a prenup so she, he gets everything? Yes. And quadrillions of dollars or whatever? I don't yes. know. Does awareness of consciousness have benefits? Yes. I don't even know what that statement means. Well, that you're, that you're aware of, of, of your, the fact that you're a conscious being, that you're, you know, like through meditation and being aware, you know, a lot of people go through life on autopilot. They don't realize that they have thoughts and feelings and they're, you know, where that stuff comes from. And you know, that voice in your head, lots of people ignore that voice. Yeah, it gets people loud are in, sometimes. In tune with it, right? So I think awareness of that voice is important because that thing tells you stuff sometimes like you know whack off <laughs> and you should wax on wax off you should always listen to that voice and it's like deadpool yeah i hear you uh do thoughts have a pattern i think they're random yeah and i don't know where the fuck they come from so it might be random you know you have thirty thousand plus thoughts a day did you know this I, I don't feel like I have them. <laughs> you do. You just don't know. That's way too many. I can't even process <laughs> 30,000 things. Yes. I might have about eight. I have about eight, good, eight good thoughts. Eight. Okay. Like, you should do this or you should not do that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a basic man. I like <sighs> lollipops in my mouth and butter in my ass. What? My, my girlfriend's making a homemade uh, granola. Oh, shit. It smells amazing. Like, it's like... <laughs> I'm there salivating goes, right there now. There goes your fasting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't been doing a lot of that, actually. Oh, yeah? I don't know. I, 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 some, some fasting, but not really. I stopped keeping track. And... It's probably best because don't feel bad about not doing it. That's what I've realized. You know, if there's a night you don't want to, don't do it. Yeah. I, I feel 100% better because there's some nights where you want to probably take a little medicine and go off the rails. You just do it. Just don't make that the habit. Make it the exception. Yeah, once a week or something or, you know, yeah. and then I find if I allow myself that, I don't go off the reservation. Like if I'm restricting, restricting, and when I go oh, off I gotcha. the it's bad. It's like, it, it, there's, a, <laughs> there's a long trip. It's, it's bad. <laughs> but if I'm like, eh, tonight I'm a little hungry at 10 o'clock, I'm going to have a small yeah. snack, you know, and it won't turn into an entire box of cereal and all kinds <laughs> of other things. Well, then you're not living and go, sometimes you need to eat three quarters of a box of Fruity pebbles. Oh, I hate those. Ew, you eat that? Fuck yeah. I didn't even use a spoon last time. So much of a savage. I was just, oh, oh. Uh, I, when, I, when I snack, I usually snack on savory stuff. I'm not a big, like. Like crackers? Like cheese crackers? What kind of savory? Uh, yeah, cheese and crackers. A little chop a little sausage. You know, have ah, little, there we go. Some pretzel, uh, some pretzel chips. Maybe with some uh, hummus, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't know. I hear you. Oh, speaking of meat sticks, I'm supposed to have a, a meat stick sponsor signing up, so we should get some samples soon. Awesome. I like have it. those shortly. Yeah. Will stricter laws make a better world? No. Yeah, I agree. I feel like we're already getting more shit taken away from us than we need to. Agreed. Let's move along. Fuck, Mary kill. Celebrity edition number one. Holy fuck. Ooh. 102. <laughs> I don't even know if these numbers are. We're getting up there. You might be making shit up at this point. Okay. It's fine. I don't even care. Uh, Hollywood, give me wood number 28. It's Jennifer Aniston, Megan Fox, and Selma Hayek. Whew. That's all I got to say before I. I, I already know. For, I know you know, but you got to. I don't need to look. I can tell you right now, but I'll look because just, just for appeasing you. Yeah, right? That's a solid picture of Miss Aniston. That's good. I never found her that attractive. 
I don't know what I'm talking about. had a nipple heart on every show, which was weird. Yeah. Uh, Megan Fox. It's good. Bang. Yep. Selma Hayek. Mary. She's 52. Mary. Looks like something's growing down here. Mary twice. <laughs> Maybe three times. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> What's with the, what the fuck was that? <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> Don't look behind the curtain. I'm out on the Aniston. I, oh, I never, really? I, I never liked her. I don't know. I never found her attractive. I'm, in, I'm marrying all three. I'm moving to Utah you know, on some polygamy. Okay. Fuck monogamy. Uh, do you have any knowledge for the week? Yeah, I saw a movie over the weekend. Uh, okay. It's on Netflix. It's called Bleed for This. Ooh, it's um, not menstruation. No, it's a story of Vin- Vinny Pazienza. Who was a boxer? Here, I'll show you. Who was a boxer? Um, there it is, on IMDb. Um, who broke his neck and then ended up winning the title, anyways. So it's pretty good. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime too. I just noticed, but it's for free on Netflix. Highly recommend if you're looking for like uh, hour and a half of entertainment and you want something kind of combat related. It's it's a mm-hmm. good story, you know. So how did he rehabilitate then like, uh, from well, a broken neck? They took like screws and put his head in some weird contraption. And then he, I guess uh, the story is, is he did it in his basement, like against his doctor's orders and slowly started lifting weights and getting back in. I think he was one of those guys who was just like a physical specimen, you know? And I don't know, I guess his neck fused back together and everything was good. And I went no drugs or I would imagine you got to be doing a little something. Not according to the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this a uh, dirty little secret. Let's see what else we got. I wrote that down. I'm going to check that out. It's on my list. It's on my short list. Okay. So I went to the UFC store to see what kind of weird shit they're selling. And that's where you saw what was next to come. So apparently, if you had fucking, <laughs> you could get the UFC Fight Island flip flops and the UFC Fight Island slides. That's a little pricey for uh, a $2. fucking island that you're yeah. barely using. Like, uh, that that was one. There was something Could else. Could I see a Christmas gift in your future? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but uh, you know what? I think that's probably why their sales are up. That fine island gear is fucking cool. I like a lot of that shit. Yeah. Not not so much these. Like, let's see what else they had here. They have a lot of shit for sale on the goddamn website. I mean, they do. It's kind of shocking. I couldn't find the Wiener brander anymore. That uh, hot dog brander. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You love the hot dogs. It's yeah. all delicious. Damn right. Assholes and hooves. Hooves. You can get the UFC Sportula. Oh, cool. I didn't know they had it. They had everything, man. It's pretty nice. I like that one. You get the fucking island, Fight Island map collection. UFC yeah. cotton canvas duffel. Nice. Yeah, they got everything, man. You got a, little, a little Bruce Buffer hiding in there. Hello. Little ring guard girls. But I feel they, they missed the opportunity. They could have done a whole lot more with that. They had the right idea, but not... They didn't 100 percent deliver on the execution of said idea yeah it was close but efficient however that works i got nothing else me neither i'm good you're now done that's like a huge <laughs> swall over this coronavirus like the sc- my screen's gonna crack please it stop might break <laughs> See that? i don't want to blow out an o-ring flexing on you <laughs> you gotta have like a stroke right right Hopefully, on the camera because <laughs> i'm way i gotta donate blood on thursday anyway <laughs> okay good, good, good. we're a little hot <laughs> that has been this week's edition of my notes my name is engel wiggle thanks for glance